So Colombia is heavily featured in the new crime thriller Missing, a follow-up to 2018 Searching, but is it an accurate depiction of the country? Hi all, I'm Israel and you're watching my travel channel where I talk all things Colombia. So I'm finally getting around to doing some more fun and less bureaucratic content as today I'm taking a look at a movie that I was really looking forward to and have now finally seen Missing. As I mentioned in the intro, this is like a spiritual sequel to 2018 Searching as like that film, the entire story is presented through software, apps and websites on the characters' phones, laptops and even smartwatches. I really love Searching, in my opinion it was easily the best film to use this kind of format up until now, so I was stoked when I heard that its creators were back to do another one. Now I was already super on board with it, but then I found out that it's largely set in Cartagena in Colombia, so now this is just something I absolutely had to talk about. I, I saw the movie last week and I figured it would be cool to talk about how it depicts Colombia and whether or not it's an accurate take. Before I get started, I should say that I won't be giving away any spoilers, I'll be talking about a few small details that have no impact on the plot, but in terms of actual important plot details, I won't be discussing anything beyond what's shown in the trailer. So if you haven't seen the movie, you're safe to watch this. Alright, so let's get into it. As I mentioned before, every Colombian scene in this film takes place in Cartagena, and whilst we do get a good amount of camera footage of the city, a lot of it is shown via Google Maps and Street View. Because of this, it should be quite easy to pinpoint exact streets and addresses of where characters are in the movie. Or at least, so you might think. See, the thing here is that whilst the film shows characters visiting specific shops and hotels that have actual addresses, both the business names and the addresses they're located in are completely made up. Uh, the way they do this is that they'll show an actual Google Maps image of the area that has real addresses, businesses and landmarks everywhere, but the pinpointed address and business where something in the plot is taking place is totally made up. For example, you can see from the trailer here that the Hotel Pomarosa is located on Carrera 2, number 12B92, which they pinpoint here on the map. It's part of the War Colonial City, which is by far the most popular tourist attraction, and this street in particular has a lot of hotels and accommodation in real life, so they got that pretty accurate. If you go to Google Maps though in real life, you'll notice that the Hotel Pomarosa specifically is nowhere to be seen in the area it says it is in the film, or anywhere else for that matter, and the aforementioned address of this hotel is totally made up as well. Carrera 2 exists, but there's no such thing as 12B92 on this street. So something I just quickly wanted to mention is that this uh, street view image that you see here in the trailer does not actually appear where it says it is, uh, pinpointed here. If you go there in real life, uh, you can drop a street view here, around about here where it would be and you'll notice that the buildings are totally different. So yeah, it's actually not where it says it is. Um, I know in the trailer it says this is on uh, Carrera 2, as you can see here, but in real life this is actually Carrera 8. Uh, even like just this whole street is Carrera 8. I guess they could mean Carrera 2 being up here, like if it took up, you know, the entire block. So if it was like, um, you know, Carrera 8 and Carrera 2. But even if you go to Carrera 2 up here, this is a totally different building. So yeah, it's not actually where it says it is at all. I actually painstakingly went down like every uh, narrow street in all of the war colonial city of Cartagena and I could not find uh, this Google Street View for the life of me anywhere. So I don't even know if this is in Cartagena at all. Worth noting that a little bit later on in the trailer, they do actually show some uh, coordinates, as you can see here. If you try typing these coordinates into Google Maps though, um, it takes you to Venezuela, so <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, on the same continent, but, uh, yeah, not quite there. <laughs> anyway, um, just something I wanted to quickly mention back to the video. It's pretty much the same deal for the hardware store that appears in the movie. There is no hardware store called Ferrataria La 85, and even if there was, it doesn't exist on this street of the Getsemani district. Now, whilst the businesses and the addresses that are part of the plot are fake, all of the tourist sites that feature are real locations. You'll see a bunch of these sprinkled throughout the movie, most of which are areas in the war colonial city, but the area with the most plot significance is this pedestrian bridge going over the gap in the wall. In the film, this is really made out as a popular romantic tourist attraction where couples do something that I won't spoil as it's kind of integral to the plot. In real life though, this bridge isn't used the same way it is in the movie. It's not a real tourist attraction, there's nothing famously romantic about it. It's honestly just an ordinary pedestrian bridge with not a lot more to it. I guess the filmmakers just needed a location that tied into the plot they had going, so they picked this random bridge and made it into something really important. But yeah, in real life, it's pretty discreet. Anyway, there's not a lot more to say about location, so let's move on to something more interesting and talk about how Missing depicts Colombia from a cultural perspective. So the main conduit we have for Colombian culture here is a character named Javier, who, as you can also see in the trailer, helps June in the search for her missing mum. 
Looking at how they developed and wrote this character, there are definitely a lot of things that are quite culturally authentic. Fair warning, the first thing I wanted to mention about him isn't in the trailer, but I wouldn't consider it a spoiler as it's just a small detail that has no bearing on the plot. And that is the fact that in one of his earlier scenes when June's contacting him for the first time and asking if she can call him via FaceTime, his immediate response is, Oh, I don't use FaceTime, can we use WhatsApp instead? Now this detail is absolutely spot on, in fact I can virtually guarantee that if you were in a situation where you were video calling a Colombian like 85% of the time, they're going to want to use WhatsApp. If you don't use this app, you might have a hard time living in Colombia as it's really what everyone uses for day-to-day -day messaging and calls. Even in commercial settings, it's quite common for businesses to use WhatsApp as the primary utility for messaging instead of email. Obviously it depends on the business size, but don't be surprised to see a lot of smaller businesses using this as their main means of communication. Speaking of phones, in case it wasn't already obvious, the first two digits you see in a lot of the phone numbers that pop up in the film are Colombia's country code numbers. Uh, a basic detail, but at least they did some homework here. Getting back to Javier though, another small detail that you can see in the trailer this time is the fact that he's uh, charging eight US dollars for his cleaning and electrical services. Now, whilst you probably won't get prices this low for this kind of thing if you're hiring someone who's part of an actual business, in the movie, June's hiring him through a microtask gig website. For those who aren't in the know, these are basically websites where you pay a single person to help you with simple tasks, and they generally cost a lot less than hiring businesses. Now whilst I'd say Javier's $8 listing for cleaning and electrical services is definitely on the cheaper end, it's not a totally unrealistic price for this kind of thing in Colombia either. There's a Colombian company called Help It for instance that offers a lot of similar services, several of which are honestly not a whole lot more expensive than $8, and this is an actual business. If you would hire someone to do some cleaning via a gig website though, I've no doubt you could find someone cheaper. So yeah, Javier's $8 services are definitely the kind of thing you could come across if you look hard enough. You'll notice from the trailer though that June isn't actually hiring him to do any cleaning or anything electrical, but is actually asking him to help her with her investigation, which is obviously entirely outside of his job description. Now, I'm not sure if this was an intentional detail from the writers, but either way, the idea that this Colombian guy would go beyond his line of work to help an individual in need is absolutely true to life. Personally, I've had a number of experiences in Colombia where a random person I've only just met will go out of their way to help me with something that's outside of their job description or obligation. I've had a taxi driver do my laundry at his own apartment when he couldn't find any open laundries around the city. I've had a lady and her daughter offer me a lift from Money Zylas Airport into the city and then buying me dinner at Domino's. And in both these situations, I never asked these people to do these things. It was 100% their suggestions to begin with. I will say that not everyone is like this and I've certainly experienced people who just want to do the bare minimum to help you even if you're paying them but when you do get helpful people uh, they can be some of the most generous people you'll see anywhere in the world. Uh, I should also say that in Cartagena where this movie is set and just on the whole Caribbean coast generally you will find by and large the people to be more uh, personable and helpful which makes what Javier does in this movie even more believable. Alright I'm going to go into another detail that wasn't shown in the trailer but again I don't consider this to be a spoiler to the plot so with that in mind another aspect of Javier's character that's true to real life Colombians is the fact that he appears to be a single father. Now I could be wrong on this as I don't ever remember him overtly saying that he's single in the film but the way he talks about his son and how he specifically has been estranged from him as opposed to him and his partner it does seem to heavily suggest that he's single along with the fact that he's on his own for almost the entire movie. Uh, so as said, this is very true to Colombia. According to Colombia reports, 84% of Colombian babies are born outside of wedlock. And in Latin America more broadly, single mums account for more than half of all births. Uh, whilst many of these single parents may find a new partner eventually, until this happens, roughly three out of 10 children live with a single parent. Now this data was reported in 2016, so it probably varies slightly, but you get a vague idea. In the movie, Javier doesn't live with his son, as I said, he's been estranged from him, but my point is that he is a single parent, and this is definitely something you'll see a lot of in Colombia. Alright, now so far the filmmakers seem to be on a roll in getting things accurate, but I'm afraid that's not the case with its next point regarding Javier's appearance, specifically his skin tone. Although I'd say that he could definitely pass for Colombian in his appearance, uh, despite the fact that this is a Portuguese actor, I wouldn't immediately pick him as someone from Cartagena. See, on the Caribbean coast, you'll generally find most people to have darker skin tones. 
Whilst like any major city you'll find people from other departments who have lighter skin living in Cartagena, or even people who were born in Cartagena that have lighter skin, these people are really the minority. Most of the time if you see someone with a lighter complexion in Cartagena it's because they're a tourist as the majority of Cartageneros do tend to have darker skin tones. Now outside of Javier the movie did seem to reflect this in the few moments where it featured other people from the city but Javier himself very much looks like he's from elsewhere. Another factor that Colombians will probably pick up on is his accent, which absolutely is not a Costeño accent at all. Uh, as I mentioned, it's entirely possible that he's from another department and has moved to Cartagena, but I do tend to think that the writers probably weren't thinking about this and that it's more of a simple oversight. So I've talked a lot about Javier, but let's move on to another cultural element of the film, and that is how it depicts Colombia in terms of its safety. Uh, this was probably my only concern going into the movie, as I was worried that it might be like every Hollywood movie and TV show you see about Colombia, where it makes it look like some death wish for tourists. Obviously, this is a movie about a missing person, so when you pair that with Colombia, I was thinking, okay, this might be one of those movies. Uh, however, without spoiling anything, I'm happy to report that, at least by the time the credits roll, it really doesn't tarnish the country in any way. There is one scene you'll notice in the trailer where there's a kidnapping going on, but again, without spoiling anything, they do something that kind of undoes this in a way, but I'll let you find out for yourself. One thing I do want to bring up with this kidnapping scene though is that you'll notice that it takes place right next to the pedestrian bridge I discussed earlier, right outside the walled city. Now, although this is definitely a quieter area in real life, the walled city is one of, if not the most heavily monitored areas for its size in all of Colombia. The chances of someone kidnapping you right outside the entrance like this is virtually zero. There's really no reason a kidnapper would do this here where they could go somewhere that's less monitored, i.e. literally anywhere else in Cartagena or the rest of Colombia. Now if there's anyone watching this who's already seen the movie you might be thinking yeah but this wasn't your normal kidnapping because X spoiler that I won't mention and to those people I say yes but even considering those details no one's likely going to be dumb enough to do this uh, when there could be a bunch of police watching. Anyway that just about brings us to the end of this analysis but there was just one quick last thing I wanted to point out. It's not in the trailer but it's not a spoiler or anything it's just a quick little blink and you'll miss kind of thing that I thought was both funny and dead on and that's the moment when June types Colombia into Google, she spells it like, well, you know. So this is a very common mistake amongst foreigners, especially those that haven't had much exposure to the country before, really to the point of becoming a meme. There's definitely a tongue-in-cheek grudge Colombians hold for people who do this, like I remember seeing caps being sold at Bogota Airport that read, it's Colombia, not Colombia. So this is definitely a mistake a lot of Colombians are conscious of. So I thought it was funny that that movie kind of played on that a bit. Alright, so that was everything I noticed from a cultural perspective about Missing. I will say it's a great movie that you should definitely go and see if you are intrigued. Uh, I hope Hope you enjoyed learning a bit about Colombia with me and until next time like sub bell and I'll see you around. Ciao!